I'm Ted Dickman from the NBL. I'm here with Glenn Savile. So, averaging over 10 points per game in nine of your first NBL seasons, how do you manage to stay so fit over the years? I only 10. Oh, it's a bit. How do I stay fit? Uh, I've got a wife who's a personal trainer. I guess that's uh, one way of doing it. Yeah, she keeps me in shape. All right, and we saw your poster dunk from the 99 2000 season. Yeah. So, uh, do you still have some of those left in you? Uh, not too many. I've actually I've forgotten how to dunk. It's been that long since I've dunked. There's no way, uh, unless it's a breakaway, there might be a fair chance that I might be able to finish on the rim. But uh, yeah, if you go to YouTube, you'll see a couple of rare ones. But uh, yeah, what's that? You know, it is 11 years ago, so um, long time between jinx. Comes this monster jam from Glenn Savile. Oh, Although I did dunk on Russell Hinder last season, so yeah, that is uh, that was pretty decent. Not sure that's on any um, highlight reels though. Yeah, So uh, must we'll be embarrassing for him. <laughs> Would we have a better chance of seeing this season uh, a Glenn Savile throwdown or a Zach Delaney throwdown? Uh, well, a fair chance probably mine. If he had a bit of help, we might be able to throw him up there. Okay. Um, the crowd's just happy to see him hit a basket. So if we can get that, that we'd be happy with that. All right, what was it like rejoining the Hawks in 2008 after your season with the Kings? Uh, I'm just glad they let me come back and uh, stop spitting on me from the last time that I played to, to here. But uh, uh, no, it was uh, it was pretty good. It was, um, it, I guess obviously I would have liked to have stayed in Sydney and would have enjoyed you know playing out the three seasons that I did sign with Sydney. But uh, I guess at the end of the day, um, I did have the opportunity, to, fortunately, to come back here and, and uh, you know a season later made it in the grand final. Uh, and competing in two Olympic games and winning an NBL championship, uh, what's been the biggest moment in your basketball career? Um, I think oh, probably for different reasons. Obviously, winning a championship in 2001 is is probably you know I definitely definitely never forget that. Never forget the feeling of doing it, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it you know sometime soon because uh, getting a bit long in the tooth here. So I, I better hurry up and win another championship. But uh, and also you know representing my country and, and being able to go to the Olympics and and uh, you know compete against the best in the world. Obviously, there there's some very fond memories that I look back on there as well. Right. And you described Andrew Gaze as your toughest competitor to defend. Are there any guys in the league that compare to him now, or who would you say is the toughest player to defend? Uh, I think uh, Andrew Gaze is always the toughest, t toughest guy to defend, and particularly when you know when I came into the league as a fairly young guy, and uh, you know def defense was probably defense was probably not you know one of my. Uh, better attributes, I guess, and playing against the, one of the best, arguably the best scorers uh, going around. So, um, and I think it might have been a 60 point game on me there at one stage. I th actually, I think maybe 45 that was on Matt Campbell, the rest was on me. So. <laughs> All right, and being one of four Hawks players that's in, that's had their jersey retired, you along with Matt Campbell, Chuck Harmison, and Coach McLeod, uh, what does that honor mean for you? Um, yeah, I guess it's a great honour. I think um, you know, anytime someone can get the, their jersey retired and, and the situation and where it, it took place, um, we're in a situation where possibly the, the club could have folded because people are scratching their heads, thinking a little bit why have our jerseys still be, have been retired if we're still playing, um, which is an awkward one <laughs> to, to explain sometimes. But uh, the fact that you know we weren't sure if the club was going to um, survive after past that season and. You know, I guess it was a, a pretty, a pretty nice thing for the club to do for us, and and here we are. And we get to run out there and see our our jerseys retired. Haven't given up though. I still continue to, to try and play. So maybe I can put another one up after I've retired. Cool. So what's been your most embarrassing Hawks moment? Um, Other than the Andrew Gaze game. Most embarrassing Hawks moment. Uh, no, uh, I, uh, banking a free throw is fairly embarrassing. <laughs> Particularly when uh, the camera panned to my teammates when I got subbed out after it and they were all laughing, they thought it was pretty funny. So I think any time you bank a free throw or airball a free throw is, uh, is a pretty embarrassing moment. It's okay. All right, um, having more career, re career rebounds than any other player in the NBL right now, any other active player in the NBL. Right? Yeah. So, uh, Amazing how many times the ball bounces to you. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. So how do you manage to keep getting better after all these years and what motivates you to do that? 
Um, I think at the end of the day, it's your habits. Um, you know, continually um, and building on those habits and, and putting in, in hard work and, and uh, to be able to do it over a long period of time. And I guess, you know, as you get older, things you start to slow down a little bit and you need to sort of change your game. And, and I think that's probably one thing that, you know, when I did start out, I was more of a slashing player and finishing on the rim and all those kinds of things, whereas now I've developed my game um, to the perimeter. And uh, fortunately did uh, win... Uh, best three-point shooter a couple of seasons ago, then they ended up moving the three-point line out and then had a shocker last year, so thanks for that. Um, but I think um, being able to, to improve your game in, in all facets over those years and, and just making sure I have good habits and good things come to those people who hustle. That's true. Just I, remember that. <laughs> and being an NBL veteran, how have you managed to look after the young guys and uh, show them the tricks of the trade of the NBL? Um, mostly just yell at them a lot. That's uh, generally what I do, if you ask them. But uh, oh, I guess uh, try to be a role model for, for some of those younger guys and, and um, you know, someone to look up to, you know, and uh, obviously some players from my point of view when I was growing up as well. Um, you know, just try and emulate that and, and give them someone, someone to, uh, to sort of look at and watch and see what they do and maybe follow in their footsteps. All right. Any specific team or individual goals for this upcoming year? Um, you know, at this stage, not necessarily. I guess it's always a goal, you know, to be in the playoffs. And unfortunately, we missed out last year by just just one game. And uh, I guess you know, with uh, with our squad is relatively the same with all of our Australians. We're going to change with our imports. So, you know, there might be a couple of things that might change there. But uh, you know, I think we we've overachieved. You know, we overachieved for part of the season last year. We had a tough tough time with injuries and uh, I guess if you know if that's to happen again we just need to be able to get through that and not worry about it and end of the season hopefully be in the playoffs. Okay. And last question, we read that your best off or best off court experience was learning how to play the guitar. So uh, after you retire from basketball, is, can we see you tearing up the stage? Well, Surf and Sav and the uh, Corrupted Cowboys are on a little bit of a hiatus at the moment. Um, some of my band members decided to go off and do better things. They're far better musicians than I am, but uh, oh, it's just something that um, I always wanted to do. I'm probably pretty proud of the fact that I can play relatively well and have played a few gigs at the pub. They do put chicken wire up in front of our band, though, so just we don't hit with by any schooners. We're that bad. All right, well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Appreciate it. Thank you.